Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tie a fairly simple paracord keychain. Now, in the previous video, I demonstrated the double box knot. This video is going to build upon that tutorial and we're going to upgrade the knot into a triple box knot and use it in order to make a keychain. Here you can see the keychain that we're going to be making. We have a loop at the top so that we can attach it onto a keyring. Then we have a series of triple box knots and then we finish with a stopper knot. I really like this design because it enables you to represent various flags of countries. Now in this case I used Rasta colors, but you could use any other color combination as well. Now the keychain is not too long nor too short, in fact I think this is the perfect size for such a keychain. It is also quite rigid, so it doesn't move around too much. It is very comfortable to use and I really like it. Enough of me praising it, let's make one. For the supplies, we're going to use three pieces of type 1 paracord, each about two and a half feet long. These are going to be used for the main color combination. We're also going to use one longer piece, about three and a half feet long, which is going to be used for the sides as well as the loop. Besides the cords, we're going to need two tools a knife or scissors in order to cut the cords, as well as a lighter to melt them. With this we have the supplies needed to make the keychain. Let's begin. I'm going to start by taking the longer of the four cords. So this one is about three and a half feet long. I'm going to fold it in half. then use it to create a loop, like this. Then I'm going to take one of the other three cords and fold it in half. I'm going to push this byte through the loop, then pull the two ends through the byte in order to create a lark's head knot. So like this. Then tighten up. Pick up the next of the three cords. Fold it in half again, go through the loop and place the two working ends through the byte in order to create a second lark's head knot. Like this. Then the third cord. Same deal. So we fold it in half, feed it through the loop, and create the third lark's head knot by pulling in the two working ends through the byte. Like this. Then adjust the size of your loop. And we have the basic setup for our keychain. So, this is the top part completed. 
Now you don't have to use the loop made with the long chord as your only option. You can choose to use a key ring or a snap hook instead of it. Now in this case, we would attach our shorter chords onto the snap hook or key ring directly. So something like this. Now we have one more chord remaining, which is the one used for the sides. In this case, you would run this longer chord through the three larks head knots. Like this. And this way, you could use this kind of a setup as well. Whichever you choose, it will work just fine. So now that we have the basic setup complete, we can continue by forming the body. So to start, we're going to pick up our setup and rotate it so that the loop is at the bottom. Then we're going to spread apart these six chords. So the first one is going to face down, and the next one up, and the next one down, and the next one up, and the next one down, and the last one faces up. So basically, we have a fairly symmetrical setup. We're going to continue by taking the left end and we're going to place it over the top like this and to the right side. Then I'm going to pick up the right end and I'm going to place it to the left side. You can see that the left end travels at the top and the right end here at the bottom. I'm going to pick up the first chord on the left, which is this one, and I'm going to weave it through these two chords, going over under. Then the next chord, which is this top one, is going to travel over under towards the bottom side. Then the next chord, which is this one at the bottom, is going to travel over under towards the top. And the next one, so this top one, over under towards the bottom. And the next one, so this bottom one, over under. And finally the last one, travels over, then under, towards the bottom, like this. So this is one knot completed. Now I pull a bit on these side chords and a little bit on the other six. Then on the side chords again a bit and the other six. And I slowly tighten everything up. Then I just pull on each of the chords just to tighten everything up nice and firm. So at this point I can continue the next knot. This one is done exactly the same way, 
But there are a few details that you need to look out for. So you can see that this cord is traveling on top and this one on the left is traveling here at the bottom. So this top one is going to fold like this and the other one that travels under is going to fold under this top one like this. Now we can continue our weaving. So we start on the left again. We pick up the leftmost cord and travel over under. Then the next one. Over under. And 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 finally the last one. Over under. And then again we slowly tighten it up by first pulling on these outer two cords, then the other six, then the outer ones a bit, and the other six. We want to tighten up firmly, but not too much. Let's do one more just for good measure. So again, I place the top cord, so this one on the left, over the top. Then the bottom cord, under the top one like this. Then I start on the left side, with the leftmost cord, I travel over under, then continue the same way, traveling towards the right side. Tighten up slowly. And this is pretty much all we're going to do in order to form the body of our keychain. You can see that a little bit of the body is already forming, but it's going to look much better after a few more rows. After lining up a series of box knots, we have formed the body of our keychain. We have a loop on one of the sides, and on the other, we're going to finish the keychain using a multi-strand stopper knot. Now you have a bunch of knots to choose from, in my case I'm going to demonstrate the foot rope knot. So the way that I do the foot rope knot is that I tighten it around the body so that it gets a bit of a mushroom-like look at the bottom. Now you can also tighten it up at the very bottom, whichever you prefer. So for the foot rope knot, we first spread apart our cords. One is facing each of the sides. You don't have to be super accurate, the point of this is so that the cords don't overlap. Now what we're going to do is tie a crown knot. For the crown knot, 
pick up one of the chords and travel counterclockwise over the next chord. Then the next chord travels counterclockwise over the next. And then the next travels counterclockwise over the next. And we repeat this process until we reach the final chord. Once we reach the last of the chords that we need to use, we go into the loop created by the first chord. And with this we have tied a crown knot. Now I'm going to slightly tighten it up. This just makes things a bit easier to see. So something like this. We're going to continue by picking up one of the chords, going under the next chord, so under and up and through the middle. Like this. The point here is that you go under the next chord and directly up through the middle. You will want to hold the chords that you have already done, just so that you know that you have already used them. Then do the same with the other chords. So pick up the next one, travel under the next chord and directly up. And the next, under the next chord and directly up. Now with the last chord you need to be careful that you go under the next chord and directly up through the space that isn't occupied with one of the chords. The last one is a bit trickier, but if you observe the knot, you're going to see where you need to go. Now at this point we have the knot tied. All we do is we slightly pull on each of the cords and slowly, slowly, slowly tighten up the foot rope knot. I'm tightening it up around the core or the body, but you can also tighten it up at the very end, whichever you prefer. So after tightening the foot rope knot, you're going to get these cords that are running out from the bottom. What I do is simply trim them and meld them in order to secure them. Now as the final step, what I do is I try to apply some heat onto the keychain to stiffen it up. Like this. And then, after I have stiffened it up using some flame, I also like to roll it, or actually just flatten it out, by placing it in between two planks, like this, and just flattening it out. In my opinion, this gives it a bit of a nicer look. And with that, your keychain is complete. 
Guys, thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and that it wasn't too hard. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.